so the other day on stream, I was checking a transcription suggestion, and I was dumb enough to say, if you're not a big Billy Strings fan, come back in 15 minutes or something. Uh oh, I said an amount of time again. That means I'm going to be timed, and I'm not going to get it done in 15 minutes. Before you leave a stupid comment like, how could someone not be a big Billy Strings fan? Let me remind you that there's a whole sea of other flat pickers out there. You know, people got opinions, and the last thing I want is a Waffle House style brawl breaking out in the comment section between the pro Billies and the anti Billies, so don't bother. Anyway, the challenge is beginning, and transcribing this first repeated pattern gave me a little bit of trouble. Uh, because Billy kind of ghosts one of the notes in the pattern the first time he plays it. Eventually, I just put that note in parentheses and I move on. Um, starting with that slide from two to four on the G string, you can see Billy is climbing the neck using his favorite ascending lick. He uses this in uh, Dustin of Aggie a lot too. Check out my videos on the R vinyl version and the album version for more of that lick. Um, this lick surrounding the eighth fret gave me some trouble too. I probably should have found the answer sooner, knowing what Billy likes to do right there from other transcriptions, but I was kind of uh, in my head, you know, I was stuck thinking like myself and how I would improvise a passage up there. There's kind of, there's kind of like a way that I would play this lick, and I just don't think that Billy's playing it that way, so I'm, I'm trying to find out what the truth is. Now I'm trying to figure out what that lower note is. It takes me a second, but I think I figure out it's the open E string, which is what I was referencing. That's normally what Billy does up here with this lick. Once again, not how I would play this, but almost like he's kind of playing that open E up there. First slide is from B flat. It definitely is, man. Thanks for keeping me honest. That's Loco Joe calling me out on that slide as well. He's another transcriptionist and friend of the channel. We met through YouTube and we've actually done some transcription work together now as a team. He's way more familiar with Billy's tendencies, so it helps to have someone like him around. He corrects me a couple times. He course corrects throughout this. You can see I'm kind of doing the same thing here. I'm writing a kind of a diagonal descent across the fretboard, and this isn't something that Billy would do. Billy would just escape note out of there and hop back to the open shapes. Watch, I'll, I'll play it my way, and then Loco Joe sets me straight. use that last open E as an escape note. That stuff in bar seven kind of sounds like first position to me. I'm not above admitting defeat at all. <laughs> I agree with you. I concur. Okay, but this line is interesting. I start writing this from the open strings, but I eventually realize I'm not going to make it high enough, fast enough. So this line could be a closed diagonal shape too, because even though Billy doesn't descend in a diagonal closed way, he does ascend that way. So, um, like, think of his break in Enough to Leave. He does that, I think, right at the beginning of that break. It's an E. Anyway, until, until I have more information for this break, I can't make that call about whether it's open or closed. This, this could, some of this could be, like, diagonal, pentatonic or something. I'm not going to tackle that until I see what this line does. Sometimes you can hear if it's open or closed strings. In fact, a lot of times you can, but in this recording, I, I didn't feel safe making that call. So instead, I'm writing the part after to try to get context about that diagonal ascending line. Also, there's a mistake in the tab. That triplet should be 0, 1, 2, not 1, 2, 3. I fix it later. So um, Billy's about to descend using thirds. He does this in the R vinyl version of Dust in a Baggie, as well as in other breaks. Um, I make a mistake here, and I start the descent from the wrong third. You started from a higher chord shape. That's not the G you started from. You started from this one. What am I thinking? Down to A10. So I fix the chord shapes, and then I'm finally ready to go back and commit to the diagonal pentatonic as Billy's method for ascending. So we can kind of reverse engineer it. I suspect it's just the diagonal pentatonic scale. Now you can also see that I've gone over time, so F's in the chat, boys. Um, now I'm just writing the last uh, descending run in the open position. Billy does a lot of these and they're, they're all really similar. There's a couple cliches he almost always uses and they sound awesome, but after you've written a handful of them, they're probably the easiest part of the job. Um, you can learn a bunch of them from Billy's, uh, I guess like his cocaine blues breaks and his brown fairy blues breaks. Um, I believe I have videos on both of those. They're very similar and I think they have a lot of those descending runs. Uh, also, now I'm ready to write that last bass walk leading into the banjo break. 
Then, after a little bit of formatting, I'm ready to read the whole thing. So remember, you can get this tab for free at my website, LessonsWithMarcel.com. Let's see how well I did on uh, some of my first read-throughs. Something like that is the break. I can feel good about that. I can sleep at night after that. Um, what did I say? I said 15 minutes. Loco, how long did it actually take me? <laughs> I hope I hope that you hate this job. When I say, Loco, how long did it actually take me? I hope that you die inside a little bit and you're like, ugh, I gotta go figure out where he started transcribing. From first note to last note, how long did it take me? Dangerously close to your estimate, right? Around the 16 minute mark. Ah. That's all right, I still did okay. We were a little bit behind estimate, but what are you gonna do? All those folks should be coming back. I told them to leave for 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, 